everybody, I am Nico D. Today we are gonna take a look at KDE on Armbian. This is just a test, KDE isn't supported on Armbian, but you can make it run pretty well. In previous videos I've already shown that Armbian supports the Cinnamon desktop, the Mati desktop, the Gnome desktop, and of course by default there is the XFCE 4 desktop, but you can of course install a lot more desktops than that. So to begin today I will use the Jammy XFCE desktop from the test builds for the NanoPi M4 version 2. I'm using the NanoPi M4, it just also works on that. It is best to use Jammy because that probably has got a more recent KDE version. Older KDE versions didn't used to work well on ARM SBCs. But KDE has been improved a lot and it has become a lot faster. So now it runs pretty well. And also because we have got the Panfrost driver for RK3299, KDE can make use of that to make its pretty things run a lot faster. So I downloaded this image. It would be better to use an image without a desktop, but I will use this because this one is downloadable. So all I need to do is burn the image onto an SD card, put the SD card in my NanoPi M4 and boot it up. Something that I like a lot is that the first boot for Armbian has been changed. It looks a lot cleaner now and it is a lot better for new users. So first we need to type two times a new password for the root account. Then it asks what command shall we want, so I choose bash, then your username, this is all the same as it used to be, so two times your password for your user, your real name, and now it changes. So here you can choose to set up your Wi-Fi, so I will do that because I am using Wi-Fi. I've got problems with my 5 GHz on my router, so I will connect with the 2.4 GHz. I need to buy a new router I guess. Or maybe just reboot it. So that is done. Now we can change our language based on our location, yes or no. I will choose no because else I will not get the chance to choose for English and I want my Armbian in English. Since I'm in Belgium I can only choose between Dutch, French and German and I don't like any of those languages. So I chose no. Then I am in Europe, in Belgium. Yes, this is correct, my time zone. And it is setting up the locals. So this is something you had to do yourself in the past. And now it is all done at the first boot. So that is very nice. Armbin keeps evolving. So here we are in the XFCE desktop. So first thing to do as always, of course, sudo apt update. And then sudo apt upgrade so we are up to date. Now we are up to date we can install our desktop. So I will install the Kubuntu desktop and not KDE full. With KDE full there are a lot of problems. So the Kubuntu desktop will work a lot better certainly on Ubuntu. So sudo apt install Kubuntu dash desktop. So Kubuntu desktop is just Ubuntu with the KDE desktop, as there is Lubuntu with the LXDE desktop or Xubuntu with the XFCE desktop. Ubuntu isn't a desktop environment as some people think, it is just a great base to run desktop on it. So once that is done, all we need to do is reboot, so sudo reboot. And once rebooted we can select our desktop environment by clicking this small button and there choose KD Plasma and now type our password. The first time it will take a while before it is loaded and once that is done we are greeted with the KDE desktop and I must admit this looks pretty nice, I like the background. I showed my Jaro KDE in a past video on the Raspberry Pi 400 and I also liked it. It is a bit strange to use it on Armbian. I am used to using KDE on an Arch based environment. So sometimes I forget I have to use apt instead of pacman. But it is great we can use it on Armbian too. Some things do not work out of the box. So I will show how to fix everything. So all the apps installed are just the apps that were installed on the XFC desktop. And as you see it is pretty snappy. This used to be very slow. 
And here we've got our system settings. So this is something that I like a lot about KDE. The system settings are very advanced. You can change a lot of things. But as you see, when I try to change the appearance, it doesn't change. We need to reboot or log out. So as you see, everything is still in the dark theme, but I chose the light theme. We will log out in a minute to change it. So there is a lot that you can change here. So here are the window decorations for example. You can change how the windows look. You can change the splash screen. You can change everything you want here in KDE. So for that it can be handy to use KDE if you need to use a setting that isn't available in XFC or so on Armbian. KDE can be a fix for that. So as you see there is a lot to set up. Your virtual desktops. Window management, shortcuts, notifications, the regional settings, and network settings, input devices. So here is my layout, let's change that to a UK layout, because I am using an English UK keyboard. For my SBC tasks I always use an English UK keyboard, while on my PC I use a Belgian keyboard, which is Azerty vs Squarty for a US or a UK keyboard. That is a change, but I find a UK keyboard a lot easier to type on than a Azerty keyboard. So here at display and monitor we can change our renderer backend, so let's set it to OpenGL 3.1. I think it is a bit faster, I don't know, I don't have any way to measure it scientifically, but there is something missing in the display and monitor. You can change your display resolution. So first off. One thing that I liked a lot with Manjaro KD was that they used Konsole for terminal emulator. So I will install Konsole first, just because I find it a lot nicer to work with. Okay, now let's open it. It isn't always that fast, but it is acceptable. So here is Konsole. Let's increase the size a little bit with Ctrl plus. And now we will install K-Screen. So this is the tool we need to change our display resolution. So just install that. And now if we again go to our system settings. And then to display and monitor. Then you will see that you can change your display resolution and some other things too. So that is one thing that is solved. Now something else, if we go to places and if we want to open a folder, it doesn't work. So what is happening is it opens Visual Studio Codium. This because it is opening the link file, because the link file isn't pointing to a working thingy. So what is missing is Dolphin. So Dolphin is the file manager for KDE. So let's install Dolphin, sudo apt install Dolphin. And now this is installed, let's try again. So let's go to places and there open home. And as you see now it works. So this is another thing that we have fixed. Luckily it are simple things. So Dolphin is a pretty nice file manager. So everything works, it sees my USB sticks. So that is good.
So now let's change the appearance. So again, as you see, I put it on the lights team, but it didn't work. So the Breeze Global team is selected. So let's just log out. So shut down log out. And log in again. And as you see, now it is set to the light appearance. I find this a lot less depressing. So now let's open Firefox. And check if it is GPU accelerated. So about support. And to graphics. And WebGL1 driver is the Panfrost driver. So that is great. But there is one problem. So if we open YouTube. And we search for a video of Nico D, of course. So he just made a video about Kerbal Space Program for beginners. That is really an awesome game. You must watch that video. Please watch that video. So there is a problem. The sound isn't working. So I have to change some settings to make it work. But when it does work, it is very loud. It is way too loud. So I need to disable the other device. And now I don't know why it isn't working yet, but it will start working. Be careful if you are using headphones. So to spacecraft and go to space. The missions. So I'm going to start a new campaign. And I am going to show you how to do everything from scratch. Okay, here we are. So start a game. And I will do a start new game, a career. Um, how I play K B. And uh, it is different than a QWERTY keyboard for you Americans. I also use, oh, I'm going really quickly. So I better use my rocket engine to slow me down because this is going way too fast. So here we have got this. So as you see, the volume is way too loud, but if we set everything to 50%, Firefox to 50% and also the output devices, or maybe puts the output devices to 25%, then it sounds normal. But if it is set to 100% for everything, it really is way too loud. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. So as you see, KDE on Armbian isn't perfect. There has been done some work to get KDE working on Armbian, but it isn't supported at all yet. But with these tricks that I've shown you, it is very workable, it is nice to work with, it is good to install as a second desktop to use for normal tasks, but when something isn't working, you can still use the other desktop, the XFCE desktop. I used to have a lot of desktop environments installed on my SBCs, some that were very lightweight, so I could render videos with only 2GB of RAM on the Oldroid C2 for example, I used LXDE. But back then I had the Mati desktop to do my normal desktop tasks. So there is a lot of choice in desktop environments on Linux. Which desktop environment you prefer, that is your own choice. And as you see with Armbin, you can use even KDE. I find that it runs pretty nice, but it ain't perfect. I did see they made another update that should improve the performance. So that will probably be for the next Ubuntu update. 
So the 2204. So that will be it for today. Thank you all for watching. See you all later. Bye.